So I want to jump in here and tell you guys that today's video title was not clickbait. I made a stupid mistake that could have been dangerous or damaged the equipment. And my first thought when it happened was, I'll just edit this out and never show anybody. But then I started thinking, this could be a lesson that maybe someone else could learn from, so I'm going to tell the story. But we're going to start at the beginning of the day, go through it chronologically, and if you're just here to see what m stupid mistake I made, that'll be the last two to three minutes of the video. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and this is my favorite type of day. Beautiful weather, and I'm taking the tractor out to try to get it to earn a little bit of money. We're going to be tilling several gardens, and then I have a tree removal job that I don't exactly understand what is being asked of me. So I'm going to go out and give a bid on that, see if it's something I can do. Should be a fun day. All right, we're out here for garden number one. This is a small one. These little gardens take like seven minutes. So we'll be across it this direction and then this direction and then come back this way to clean up the end. Garden number two. This is my third year in a row doing this garden. I don't look for jobs. Same people just always call me or they know someone and that person calls me. After this, we'll go look at the job I'm bidding. Then I've got one more garden and it's a bigger one and it's two gardens. All right, guys, tell me what you're thinking here. They want all of these trees and stumps removed. Something like that, I can drive right up to it with the skid steer, just grab it and pull it right out. It's not even gonna resist. And there's a lot of those. And you've seen me do stumps like this. They take a little longer, but they're still worth doing most of the time. But there are a lot of them. You see, it goes two telephone poles down from here to there, down to the corner. So throw out a number what you think I should charge to remove all these stumps. They said if there's some that my machine's having a hard time with, I could cut them off low. But they mainly want it all gone. They're not looking for like professional grading here but it'd be nice if I could fill in the holes for them so I have to bring the bucket. So my biggest weakness on jobs like this is I just want to do the job. I think it would be fun, and I also think it's good video content. So what do you think? This is another garden that I've been doing for three years, maybe four, because I think the first two years we did it on that side of the house. And then last year we moved it here, but now he wants to make it bigger He's added this block wall right here, and he's got some, some fencing up to use as a trellis for the climbing plants. So I can't go both directions on this. I'll just have to go, go long ways, and that's it. But then he wants to put a second garden right down that way. So we'll do this first and then move on.
So this tree right here isn't doing us any favors, and we talked about that before they put the garden here last year, but you can manage to get it done. But it fights the tiller pretty hard breaking through those roots. When this popped off, my very first thought was, I'm not going to show the viewer what happened because I felt stupid. But as I've talked about before, it helps everyone when you show your mistakes. So I decided to go ahead and put it in the video. But because I wasn't planning on showing it, I didn't get up close footage. But I am going to go into detail of exactly what happened and why in just a minute. I wonder how many of you have already guessed from seeing the tiller bounce. Having the hydraulic top link made it a lot easier to get the tiller put back on because this was heavy and I didn't have a way to manhandle it. Now you might be thinking, why did he go ahead and finish? Well, this is a paying customer and I'm a long way from home. So what I did was go even slower and not go quite as deep on the first pass to make sure I wasn't going to hit any roots and I didn't have another problem. So I don't know how well you guys could see what happened, but while I was tilling that next to last garden spot, the tiller bounced off of the quick hitch. And you might be thinking, how could that possibly happen? Well, I did something stupid and it was really forgetfulness. So when I got my tractor, I got it with the quick hitch. One of the first things I found out is that any implement that you use with a quick hitch needs a bushing on it to make the size appropriate. The pins that go through your three-point arms are too small to be used with a quick hitch. And when I was deciding, do I want to include this conversation in the video, I remembered seeing a bunch of pictures on Facebook in different discussions where people had implements hooked up and they didn't have any bushings in there. And there were multiple times when I made a comment like, hey, just so you know, you need a bushing to use with a quick hitch. And I put bushings on every attachment I had. Then I got two or three more attachments and I started swapping bushings sometimes. If I didn't have one on this, I'd take them off the other instead of just going and getting more bushings. Well, I took the bushings off of this tiller and put them on the stump grinder. And I forgot that I did it until I was out there tilling that garden. And it, I'd been tilling already and it acted normal. But on that one, the tiller started bouncing. As soon as I saw it bouncing, it popped in my head, oh my gosh, I've taken the bushings off of that. And I knew that there was a potential this could come out of there. But I thought that, you know, I'm just going to finish this little bit. I'm 40 minutes from home doing this last one. And uh, man, when it hit those roots, it started bouncing so hard that one side came out. And when that came out, the top hook, it came out of the top hook. So I was only, I had a one point hitch back here. So before we wrap this video up, I want to show what these quick hitch bushings look like for people who may not know or be familiar with it. So here is the pin, and this pin is sized to go through your three-point arm. But you can see the amount of gap in here. It's right about the same width as the pin. And so even, this can come out of here even with this pin down, with this locking bar down. So you've got to have something in there as a bushing. So let's look at your options. So what we've got here on the top link is an example of one of those bushings. You want to hold this, buddy? Yeah. Just grab onto this whole orange part, the red part, and I'm going to pull the pin out. All right. So this is the type of bushing we're talking about. This slides over the pin and gives you the correct diameter so you don't come out. Although this actually isn't the type of bushing I usually use. Okay, so I could take the same kind of bushing I just showed and slide it onto this pin and make this quick hitch compatible. And you slide it on, it's this wide, and then you put your linchpin through here. 
Another option is these more permanent pins. If you're only going to use this with a quick hitch, you can slide this adapter over it and then you slide a roll pin through or you hammer a roll pin through and now this stays on here all the time. So here's another example on my quick hitch. You can pull that pin out. There's your bushing for the quick hitch. Bent my linch pin. So I guess there's two lessons here. First, if you didn't already know it, now you know that you need bushings on your pins. Second lesson is, walk around your equipment and check it. Because I'm in such a habit of putting on the quick hitch, you drive back, you pick it up, and you go. And I just followed that routine, and I didn't look at it. So, lesson learned. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.